The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11329 in the name of Claire Adamson on home safety kits. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. I also remind guests leaving the gallery that if they could do so quietly it would be much appreciated. I call on Claire Adamson to open the debate around seven minutes please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I firstly thank the members of the Parliament who supported this motion and who will speak to the debate this afternoon. It is a stated wish of the Scottish Government that Scotland be the best place in the world to grow up, an ambition that I am sure is shared across the Chamber. But, Presiding Officer, if we are to achieve this ambition, we must first acknowledge and tackle the areas in which Scotland's report card could be better. As a councillor in North Lanarkshire, I was nominated onto the Scottish Accident Prevention Council Home Safety Committee, and it was in that role that I became aware that in the area of non-intentional injury, that Scotland's record could be much better. Indeed, the European Child Safety Alliance country report card made for challenging reading at the time. The latest report in 2012 is produced as part of the Tools to Address Children Trauma, Injury and Children's Safety, the Tactics Project a large-scale multi-year initiative that is working to provide better information, practical tools and resources to support the adoption and implementation of evidence-based good practice for the prevention of injury to children and youth in Europe. The European Public Health Alliance and partners in over 30 countries are involved in this project, as are ROSPA, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents. One of the objectives of the projects was to review and expand a set of child safety action plan indicators to continue to monitor and benchmark progress in reducing child adolescent injury as countries moved from the planning to implementation. We are often fond of comparing ourselves to Nordic countries, but in the latest European report card it shows that, up, that injury is a leading cause of death in children and adolescents aged 0 to 19 in Scotland. In 2009, 106 children and adolescents in this age group died as a result of injury. If that rate of injury death in Scotland could be reduced to the level of the Netherlands, one of the safest countries in Europe, it is estimated that 47 of these lives might have been saved. I would also like to evidence the recent report by the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health, Why Children Die, Death in Infants and children and young people in the UK, a policy response in Scotland. In the section, Reducing Deaths from Injuries and Poisoning, the recommendation from the Royal College is that local authorities and health boards should prioritise children's safety and through utilising resources such as health visitors and home safety equipment schemes, educate and equip parents and carers to keep their children safe with a focus on water safety, blind cord safety and safe sleeping. So, presiding officer, in the light of what is undoubtedly a social justice issue, I was delighted to learn earlier this year about a Scottish Government project in conjunction with ROSPA, which sought to tackle some of these, these issues in Scotland. Can I take this opportunity to welcome to the gallery some of the staff from ROSPA Scotland today, and also take an opportunity to put on record my thanks to them as the Secretariat of the Cross-Party Group on Accident Prevention and Safety Awareness for their continual support to the group. Scotland's Home Safety Scheme was a pilot project which aimed to provide home safety equipment to families across specific areas in Scotland. It was based on the success of a similar scheme in England. The original project was created by ROSPA and resulted in 66,000 families in England receiving safety education and equipment. The project in Scotland supplied and fitted home safety equipment to 800 families. Each family also received a resource pack of information which helped to raise awareness of accidents and how they could be prevented. And this awareness raising complemented the equipment provided by the scheme, which included safety gates, window restrictors, non-slip bath and shower mats, fire guards, locks for kitchen cupboards, corner cushions, blind cleats and door jams. Investment in the scheme will contribute towards the health and well-being of young children by providing families with skills and knowledge needed to make informed decisions on injury prevention. It would allow children to develop in a secure environment, ensuring a healthy and safe future. The areas involved in the project included the Western Isles, Edinburgh, East Lothian, West Lothian, Mid Lothian, Eastern Bartonshire, Western Bartonshire, Glasgow, Aberdeen and Inverclyde. But in all these issues, how do you prove if something works? 
how do you prove the negative of an accident having been prevented? So I'm delighted today to highlight some of the key findings of an independent evaluation of the scheme conducted by SMCI Associates on behalf of ROSPA. Prevention. In the area of prevention, Scotland's home safety equipment was a preventative scheme. It reached 841 vulnerable families and a total of 1,616 vulnerable children under the age of five over the course of 13 months. Each family had an average of nine items of safety equipment and the cost of delivering the scheme ranged between £295 or £153 for each child. Compare this to the most recent available data on the cost of non-fatal hospital treatment for home accidents in children aged up to four, which is estimated at £10,000. 99% of all families engaged considered that their home was safer. The majority of professional stakeholders, including family support practitioners, health visitors and fire officers, considered that the scheme helped to make children safer and healthier, 85%. Prevent accidents and unintentional injuries in the home, 67%. And prevent accidents and unintentional injuries to children under the age of five, 75%. And if I could quote one of the parents who contributed to the report, I had been stressing about getting safety gates and other equipment in my home for a while, but could not afford it. I was overjoyed when I heard about the scheme. Thank you. The scheme also helped identify risks. It built an individual home safety risk assessment into its delivery model, targeting the, the project to each and indi individual family. The home safety risk assessment included a prescription for provision and professional installation of the equipment throughout the scheme, ensuring that boxes did not remain unopened and uninstalled in homes. All eight, 841 clients and equipment fitted with an average of nine items per family. The scheme also offered a very important home fire safety visit conducted by fire, um, in fire Scotland. Awareness of home safety was also a key element in the delivery and most of the people who were involved became more aware of the risks around their home. Presiding officer, this is a valuable pilot project. I thank the chamber once again for the opportunity to to highlight it today, I look forward to the debate. I'm very interested to hearing from the Minister how the future of home safety scheme will develop in Scotland. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Dr Richard Simpson to be followed by David Torrance. Speeches of around four minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, can I begin by congratulating Claire Adamson on securing this member's debate on home safety kits? an issue we can all agree needs our attention and consideration. In order to prevent accidents, or in some cases death in the home, uh, many uh, uh, of these accidents are totally preventable with simple safety, uh, awareness, understanding and uh, equipment. Can I also put on record my personal admiration for the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents, whose tireless work in trying to prevent accidents around the home has been saving lives for over 100 years. The success of the Scotland Home Safety Equipment Scheme does speak for itself, and Claire Adamson has referred to some of the statistics. Certainly the professionals, including family support practitioners, fire officers, health visitors, uh, all believe, or 85% of them certainly believe, that it helped the child to be healthier and safer. And 75% certainly believe that it prevented accidents to children under five. And the families themselves, well, almost 100% of them felt safer as a result of the project. I want to briefly uh, emphasize the area of, of health visitors because of the contention there is at the moment about the named person legislation which built on GERFEC, which was a, a, labor, uh, a labor administration set of proposals to make getting it right for every child. In my view, the named person is not there as some of the people in the court today are talking about. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I won't talk about the actual court case, but it's, uh, the, the, the view that's been expressed to me is that it's an interference with the family. 
But actually, this is another example of where health visitors going into the household can actually put households in contact with groups like ROSPA and others who could supply appropriate equipment to make sure that homes are actually fit for purpose for young people. Because Scotland does not have a good record in terms of child deaths, as Claire Adamson has said, and at least 47 of these would be preventable if we were able to reach the best of the U European countries, which uh, Claire Adamson reminded us was Netherlands. And this is not just about the families and the children, it is also about the cost to the NHS. Our NHS is under massive pressure, and anything which reduces that has to also got to be welcome. I welcome the fact that the government have now finally announced that we're going to have four major trauma units, and that will actually prevent some of the most serious accidents which have resulted in death. Uh, the, the major trauma units in England have demonst demonstrably reduced uh, death's uh, mortality for these 1,200 expected serious accidents in Scotland, but it's been reduced by 20% in England. The current cost of the scheme is about £235 per household or £153 per child because there were 1,616 children in, in the scheme involving the 800 uh, vulnerable families. But the cost of treating a home accident of a child under five in hospital can be as, can be as much as £10,500. And therefore, this is yet another example where the, uh, the investment in this situation following an assessment is, is, is uh, something which is highly worthwhile. Deputy Presiding Officer, I want to spend a little of the time left speaking about the campaign that my colleague Gordon Bax has been supporting in Clackmannanshire, and that is the banning of loop-blind cords. Tragically, in 2008, a two-year-old girl in Clackmannanshire became tangled in such a cord at her home resulting in loss of life. At the time, it was estimated two people died every year as a result of getting caught in looped blinds. America has, always, has already realized the dangers to children of looped blinds and banned these 15 years ago. Gordon has been supporting the parents of that young girl who've been campaigning tirelessly to have the same rules applied here in the United Kingdom. Now, I don't know if this can be dealt with under reserved uh, or devolved powers, but it does seem to me to be an area in which government action might be helpful, at least in re further raising of awareness. It can never be acceptable that with a simple remedy to prevent the death of children that we as a nation should delay in taking action. Now, I'm pleased that this campaign has had some success with new rules to improve the safety of blinds, and these have been announced by the European Commission. But I know that Gordon Banks continue to fear that until looped blind cords are designed out fully by the industry, then the threat cannot be removed completely. The cost of investing in such schemes or campaigns far outstrips the potential costs that is barely being incurred by the public purse, but more importantly, the effect upon all these families. These home safety kits, which on average contain as few as nine pieces of equipment, often quite simple equipment, which is then professionally fitted, does reduce the risk of injury greatly. And the fact that 99% of the families felt safer is a testimony to the success of the scheme. I would encourage the Minister to look at what further possibilities are available uh, to roll this scheme out further uh, and to ensure the assessment by health visitor and the named person of every household and the application of these pieces of equipment in order to reduce Scotland's rather poor record in child deaths. Many thanks. I now call David Torrens to be followed by Alex Johnston. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to thank Claire Addison for bringing forward this motion for debate and in doing so highlighting the important issue which affects thousands of young children and their families in Scotland every year. Whilst the number of deaths attributed to accidents in the home has decreased dramatically over the last 20 years, there remain far too many young children being killed or injured in accidents that are often easily preventable. A few simple pieces of equipment backed by education for parents and how to identify hazards can be all it takes to make a difference between life and death for many of the children in their homes. For this reason, I am supporting the rollout of Scotland's home safety equipment scheme across the country. There are a number of hazards in the average family home that may not initially appear particularly dangerous, but can potentially cause severe injury or even death. Young children under five are particularly vulnerable due to their natural inquisitive nature combined with the fact that children in this age bracket tend to spend more time at home. The home is constantly the most common place for children under five to have an accident. Anyone who has experience with toddlers knows only too well 
how much mischief a little one can get into when her parents' back is turned, even just for a moment. The peel of a kitchen cupboard or a flight of stairs can prove very tempting for a young child with a sense of adventure who has not yet fully developed a natural instinct for danger. In some instances, this can result in accidents involving poison, choking, suffocation, falls, burns or scalds. NHS Fife, which serves my constituency, recorded 132 emergency hospital admissions for children under five years old as a result of unintentional injury in the home in 2010-11. Many of these accidents could have been easily preventable with just a few simple measures. Equipment such as door jammers, safety gates, fire guards, line cleats and window restrictors can, all, can be all it takes to make your home accident proof. However, many families lack either the knowledge to prevent home accidents or the money to buy the safety equipment required. That is why Scotland's Home Safety Equipment Scheme has been so valuable to so many disadvantaged families in pilot areas. In addition to most of the obvious advantages of home safety kits, their potential can save lives. There are much wider benefits to be gained from their impl implementation. Reducing the number of accidents in the home means an easing of the burden on the NHS in terms of emergency treatment and follow-up care. This is a key consideration at a time when acute services are under increasing pressure and budgetary restraints. Another positive outcome of a scheme is the reassurance it provides to parents and carers by equipping them with the required knowledge and understanding to identify hazards in the home and the tools to help prevent accidents from occurring. It is therefore offers peace of mind that the family home is as safe as it possibly can be. I applaud the Royal Society for Prevention of Accidents for the creation of their initiative Home Safety Equipment Scheme in England, which provided inspiration behind the pilot project in Scotland. I also commend the efforts of the Scottish Government in conjunction with Rossbutt in Scotland, local authorities involved in the pilot areas, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, and the collective commitment in making the scheme a success. Fife was not chosen as a pilot area in which to trial a scheme, which is unfortunate, as I feel that it would have been extremely advantageous to many families within my constituency. I believe that a scheme should now be rolled out across the whole of Scotland so every disadvantaged family can receive assistance to protect their children from preventable accidents in the home. I once again thank Claire Addison for helping raise awareness of home safety kits by bringing her motion forward for the debate today. I look forward to reading the forthcoming evaluation report on Scotland's home safety equipment scheme. I hope this can be used as a tool for improving and enhancing the scheme with a view to expand it across Scotland in the very near future. Many thanks. And I now call Alex Johnston. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to congratulate Claire Adamson on having brought this matter before Parliament today uh, and to take the opportunity to offer my support and principle for the objectives which lie behind this motion. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate ROSPA for the work they've done over the years. In fact, ROSPA was an organisation that I first became aware of uh, through their involvement in the production of public information films, which used to be shown on television back in the 1960s, in the days when we only had two channels and there wasn't much exciting on. However, the series of uh, falls, scalds and electrocutions that took part place in these films were a lesson to a young child that there was danger in the home. In fact, it became increasingly obvious that there was no shortage of uh, evidence to support the claim often made and known to be accurate that the home is one of the most dangerous places uh, or environments that we can experience. Yet, I also have to say that there is an important role still for awareness and individual awareness, both in adults and children, for the dangers that we face in the home. Increasingly, new dangers come along, and while everybody now seems to be fairly clear that if you've got a young child in the house, that your first priority is to get the fire guards and the stair gates up, we have been made aware uh, through the speech we heard earlier uh, about the danger of loop blind cords, which is something as people are increasingly aware of. Also, the danger through modern heating systems, uh, if they become faulty, producing carbon dioxide, means that there is another danger in the home that we need to be aware of. So I'm fully supportive of the principle that lies behind this, that informing people of the dangers and making sure that safety equi equipment is available uh, to them is a vital step in improving safety in the home, both for adults and for children. Yet that personal responsibility must remain at the forefront of our mind. Therefore, by informing people of the dangers, 
By making the equipment available, we also need to make sure that they are aware of these dangers and do not allow themselves to fall into the trap of believing that somebody else has absolved them of that responsibility. Ultimately, I will close by making that typical noise like a Tory and saying that we cannot wrap our children in cotton wool. We can make the environment as safe as we can possibly make it, but we must make children understand the danger that they are in and take responsibility even at a very early age for ensuring that they don't uh, subject themselves to danger. We all grow up far too early uh, in this modern world, but you can never be too young to understand the limits of your own mortality. And for that reason, I would like to see us back in that period in the 1960s when there were perhaps more opportunities on television for the occasional public information film that actually frightened young children like I was then into realising there are dangers out there and we should behave a bit more responsibly. Thank you very much. Can I now invite Aileen Campbell to respond to the debate, please, Minister, around seven minutes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I am, like everyone else who has participated today in this debate, uh, pleased to respond on behalf of the Scottish Government and want to put on record my thanks to Claire Adamson for sponsoring this debate and for all the MSPs who supported the motion to enable us to have what is a very important uh, debate, but also to recognise Claire's wider work in convening the cross-party parliamentary group on accident prevention and safety awareness. Not the most uh, succinct of titles, nevertheless, an important group to have in the parliament, and I was pleased to attend one of the uh, meetings uh, in, the, in the recent past. But also, like Richard Simpson, want to place my thanks also to ROSPA, and I think uh, Alec Johnson noted his thanks to ROSPA, uh, for the work that they have tirelessly carried out over many years in terms of promoting uh, safety uh, in our homes. And when ROSPA approached the Scottish Government with the proposals for the Scottish Home Safety Equipment Scheme, we were pleased to be in a position to provide uh, funding for this, and others have outlined uh, the costings associated with it. Now, the aims of the scheme and the approach taken chimed incredibly well with our uh, approach in government, which is about prevention and early intervention. Uh, our, also, our aims to make Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. The child-centred GERFEC approach set out in our Children and Young People's Act. And I just want to pause on that because of the points that Richard uh, Simpson raised. And though I will have to be careful because of the, the legal situation and challenge which is ongoing around a particular part of the, the Act, I do recognise the potential for the named person to help signpost, I think signposting families to get that extra support, in particular about safety. And as someone who is about to re-engage with the midwife service and the health visitor service as well, and from my own experience with my own wee boy, just know how important the advice and support that health visitors and midwives can give to families uh, at times of, of, of a particular vulnerability. And so I think this is, uh, is a point well made by uh, Richard Simpson. We need to make sure that we're using all, our, uh, all of our activities to ensure the safety and well-being of our children and young people across Scotland. And of course, it particularly chimes well, of course, with the aims of our Early Years Collaborative. Now, the government is firmly focused on reducing inequalities and making sure that every child has the best start in life and that's what the Ian Gerfeck uh, stands for for every child and that making sure that every child is also ready to succeed and that's why we've developed the policies and taken forward the legislation that I've just mentioned but recognise as well that we're, again what Richard said you know this isn't just the government that thought about Gerfeck this is a, a approach that has been uh, supported across the chamber. And the sad fact is, though, that unintentional injury disproportionately affects the most vulnerable groups in society, notably children, older people and those living in areas of deprivation. And as the report points out, there are substantial financial costs both to the NHS and to wider society, an estimated £2 billion to Scottish society annually when all age groups are taken into account. And the most recent data available on the cost of a non-fatal hospital treated home accident for children up to four is £10,600. I think that was a figure that Claire Adamson also mentioned in her opening remarks. But it would be wrong to focus on the finances alone because unintentional injury is the major cause of death, especially in childhood. And each of those incidents represents 
a young life and its potential loss, not to mention the traumatic impact and effect on parents, siblings and wider family members. And sadly, death rates from injury are consistently around a third higher in Scotland than in England and Wales. And there's also good evidence to show that the rate of reduction of child injury rates in the UK lags far behind other European countries. And in human terms, it's clear, Adamson stated in her remarks, in comparison to the Netherlands, that represents a potential 47 young people whose lives would have been saved, and able to flourish and go on to contribute to Scotland's uh, uh, society uh, as well. So that's something that you need to reflect on, the, the actual human terms of these tragedies. And I mention that to remind us that we cannot be complacent and that there's still much for us to do in this area. As Claire said, Scotland could do better, and there is a balance also, I think, in reflection of what um, uh, uh, Alec Johnson said there about making sure that we don't wrap our children up in, in cotton wool. But I think there's a, there is a slight difference, but I think, and I appreciate you know, the work that we're doing around the play agenda, getting children outdoors, that we do need to make sure that we allow children to experience risk and manage that so that they can go on and, and manage that better as adults in later life. But today, I think, it's about making sure that we create the safety uh, uh, parameters for children in, the, in their homes and recognising the work of ROSPA and the, uh, and the instructive uh, evaluation support that they have produced today. Now, all of us in the Chamber, as well as those working with supporting the nurturing children and young people in Scotland, want to make Scotland the best place to grow up. And part of that must be also to make sure that our children are safe. The Scottish Home Safety Equipment Scheme, therefore, has taken us a bit of a way along that path. And I think that we can agree that the evaluation report published today demonstrates the success of the scheme. And we count that success on a number of different levels. Firstly, the number of home safety kits fitted 841 families and 1,616 children under the age of five are safer. And importantly, kits include bling cord cleats. Uh, and I commend the work of Gordon Banks and also my colleague Keith Brown in raising awareness about the dangers of bling cords. I know from my own perspective that we have taken action to make sure that our wee one uh, doesn't uh, fall risk of, of the dangers of brown bling blind cord cleats and we I think must make sure that the legacy of that absolute tragedy is to make sure that more more awareness is raised and that more lives are saved as a, as a result of the actions that we can take as a government and now this is not only the reason that people are safe is not only because of the sick kits but it's because of the holistic approach also taken by ROSPA and the local teams in providing a home safety risk assessment and home safety awareness for parents and carers and that in itself, I think, is a remarkable achievement. And I'm aware that we cannot measure what has happened and in some ways we'll never know what the full impact of the kits have been. But common sense tells us that lives will have been saved and injuries prevented. And as someone has said, there are no randomised control trials to tell you that wearing a parachute when you jump out of an aeroplane is a good thing to do. And also the quotes from the parents that have been included in the evaluation report illustrate how much parents have welcomed the scheme. And I want to return to the, the same quote that Claire Addison used when she described one parent saying, I had been stressing about getting safety gates and other equipment but could not afford it. I was overjoyed when I heard about the scheme. Thank you. Now, in linking to David Torrance's points about needing eyes at the back of your head when you're bringing up a wee one, um, we shouldn't we shouldn't have a situation where that social inequality and the lack of income prevents you from making your home as safe as it can be. So we need to sharpen our focus across government and make sure that our anti-poverty measures recognises the recommendations that have been outlined in the report today from ROSPA. And whilst we can count the number of kits fitted and the number of families visited, there are other successes from this scheme that cannot be counted or measured in the traditional way. There are now relationships that have been built between professionals and families, which will provide a springboard for further interactions. There are the links made between different professional groups who didn't know each other before, but who all have a shared interest in making sure families are safe and healthy. And maybe this is a signal that we need to involve staff groups beyond the obvious ones of health, social work and education in our GERFEC training and approach to ensure that we truly do get it right for every child. There's also the increased knowledge and the confidence on the part of the parents and carers, which in itself will contribute to children's safety. There is the increase in staff capacity also to deliver the scheme in terms of knowledge, understanding and skills, and in some cases gaining a recognised qualification. So we are delighted with the success of this scheme and would want to commend ROSPA for this initiative. And I know that it hasn't all been plain sailing and that there have been a few challenges along the way. However, we can learn from those challenges. And I know that the evaluation report makes some suggestions. 
about how we can uh, build on the legacy of this project. And I would urge community planning partnerships to study and consider those suggestions. Even in times of financial challenge, there is a need, towards, need to move towards a prevention and early intervention agenda. So in conclusion, I would again like to thank Claire Adamson for her sponsorship of this debate and to commend ROSPA for the work on the scheme and also to thank all the other members who have contributed uh, so fully uh, in the time that they have during a member's debate to make sure that we have this shared agenda towards making Scotland not only the best place to grow up but probably, I think, reverse the unfortunate train, uh, trends that we have seen in Scotland but actually make, move us towards being one of the safest places in which children can grow up as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. That ends Claire Adamson's debate on home safety kits and I now suspend this meeting until 2.30pm.